This is Ray Glasser on March 4th, 2020, and I'm going to do a video, an in-depth, high-definition video of the most incredible and futuristic Betamax that Sony has ever made. The SLHF 2100 that was released in 1990 as the 15th anniversary Betamax. There are a few things that make this Betamax really unique. Number one, the whole front is a large door that flips down and there is no buttons on the machine. There are no buttons on the machine. This is a total touch screen, touch pad, that's activated by the heat from your fingers. When you first flip this on, <laughs> the only thing that happens is the clock's blinking because I haven't set it yet like any other Betamax. Also, there's no Sony logo on the flap. No high band, no beta hi-fi, which is also kind of unique. So let's turn this thing on and see what all these buttons do. Okay, on the far left, you have the usual power and then eject below it. To the right is a section of function buttons. You have rewind, play, fast forward, pause, then below that stop, and then to the right of the stop button, a two position record button. You've got, got to hit both buttons at once to begin the machine in recording. To the right of that, over here on this section, we have the record mode, and this does record in Beta 1S, Super High Band, Beta 2, and Beta 3. To the right of that, over here, we have the usual antenna or VCR switch. To the right of that, we have the counter reset. To the right of that, we have the counter remaining, or tape remaining. To the right of that, we have tape return, which will shuttle the machine back to 000. zero, zero. Down here is your timer record button. Below that we have the quick timer button. Over here are buttons for index, which very few people I think have ever used. You have just the regular index. To the right of the index, which is your actual index search, you have the mark and erase buttons. Below that you have the input select and the S-Video input option. You have channel up or down. While you have super beta on or off, you have the B1S super high band on or off, and then stereo left or right for playback. Below that, you have controls for insert editing. You have video and or audio, and then synchro edit, which syncs you up with another Betamax. Below that, you have the tuner controls for add channels, erase channels, and then the infamous auto tracking control, which is not flawless, but it's better than nothing. You can always turn it off and then set your tracking manually. The section to the right of that is for other controls that are set by the up and down arrows in this section. You have the record level, which you can increase or decrease. You have manual tracking, which you can control with the arrows up or down. And then you have a sharpness control, also controlled by the up and down arrows. And then you hit the OK button when you're done with your setting. And finally, on the far right, that musical note is a buzzer that if you push it on, every time you touch something on this touch screen, it will beep. And that's defeatable. You also have tape select. That's for time remaining. L500, L750, and L830. The next one is edit, on or off, which softens a picture when you're dubbing to another Betamax. And lastly, on the top row is audio monitor. Left, right, mix, or both. And then I think you could also monitor either the hi-fi track or the monaural track, which is just the non-hi-fi track. Next is a button to change the command mode, which is VTR 1, 2, or 3. Next to that is a button for your internal stereo tuner. Auto stereo will bring stereo broadcast all the time, if it's on. Next is a switch for CATV to change the tuner to an antenna or a direct connection from cable TV. And the last button on the bottom is for second audio program, SAP, which was rarely used back then. The upper section on this machine is also kind of unique. Right in the center you have an indicator for power on or off. To the right you have B1S Super High Band on or off. Super Beta on or off. Beta Hi-Fi, I think on this machine is always on. You cannot record without Beta Hi-Fi. This will show you a tape playback in Beta Hi-Fi or not. And below that we have auto tracking, which is definitely defeatable. To the right, 
we have a two-line display and this is part of what makes this machine so unique this shows you a lot of information on the machine the first thing I'm going to do is attempt to set the clock which can only be set by the incredible and unique remote control that everybody hates for this thing. There it goes. One touch of the button on the remote and the clock is automatically set, which is really cool. Let me show you now how this thing works with a tape inside it. I've threaded the tape in here and this is what's really cool. You see the auto tracking blinking. It's trying to track the tape that it just loaded. And what's also unique about this machine is the status wheel right here, as it were. Now here's where these things come into play. The thing I don't like about this machine, unlike other Betamaxes, it doesn't show you a lot of information at once. What it defaults to is the hours, minutes, seconds counter up there. Now if you push the record level button, it's showing you the playback level of this tape. You hit the tracking it automatically tracked it to the left of center on this machine. If you hit sharpness, you can actually move it up and down and make it sharper or fuzzier, depending on your own taste. And when you're done, you just hit the OK button on the bottom and it's good to go. There's the sharpness I just manually set. All right, let's show some of the uh, motion on the machine. This is beta scanned forward, and you see the status button speeding up. Here's beta scanned backwards. When you go into stop and then fast forward, this thing really hauls ass. And it also shows the direction that the tape's moving, obviously. If you want to go and rewind, it's going to go backwards, like that. I think this is a six motor direct drive machine, so there's no belts in the machine, by the way. All right, let's go into slow motion. And what's cool is it actually shows the slow motion on the display. We're going at one tenth speed. You see the indicator right there. Now we're going at one fifth speed. Now we're going at the regular play mode. Here is times 2, and it says X2, <laughs> and that's a different play mode. Of course, you can always go backwards, and if you have a remote for a SLHF 1000 or a 750 that has command modes 1 or 2, and I think they all do, they will work with this machine. Now, I'm going to put it in pause. Now, I've got a remote for an SLHF 3000 with me I'm using. If I use a jog wheel on the remote and go back one frame at a time and I can also change the speed of the jog wheel, make it faster or slower. This actually does have frame by frame playback if you want to do it that way. Again, in either direction. Which is really cool. I'm going to show you now a few unique quirks about this machine that are not in the owner's manual. First of all, the machine is shut off and this door is up and there's no tape inside it. If you want to play a tape, you hit the play button on the remote and guess what? There it goes. The door drops down by itself, and the machine turns on, and you get one of the six scrolling messages that are on this machine. Please put in a cassette, is what it's telling you. All right. Also, this machine has no on-screen displays, unlike the SLHF 750 and the SLHF 1000. I'm now going to show you the different displays that come on this uh, information center here. We're going to go and rewind, and rewind this tape to the beginning. It goes in automatic playback, which, which I didn't know. <laughs> now we are at the beginning of the tape. If you try to re rewind it more, look what the, what the machine tells you. 
and all these messages scroll twice. Meaning you can't rewind it anymore. Also, if you try to record on this machine and the record tab is punched out so it blocks the record mode, watch what happens. Two things happen. Please change the cassette and since the machine can't record on it, it ejects it for you. Which I think is really cool. Another message on this thing is when you're at the end of the tape and you can't fast forward anymore, guess what the machine tells you? And again, this scrolls twice. You get this message when you're in the record mode and you try to do something the machine does not like. <laughs> something else I wanted to show you is we are now on line input number one and this has three line inputs. You notice it says S. That's the S video. If, if I hit the S video button, it goes away. Hit the input select, line 2, line th 2S, line 3, and that's how you change the inputs on the machine. Let me show you now what it looks like on this display when you do an insert edit. Okay, we are now in tape playback, and to get the insert video and audio going, you put it in pause, then you hit the video insert, or that's the audio, sorry. You see an A appeared there. Then you hit V, video appears there. And guess what? You are now doing insert edit on both audio and video. Which can be done independently, which is kind of nice. A few more features I want to show you guys. There's actually an auto playback feature on this machine. When you hit the auto playback, it's going to... Go back to the beginning and start playing the tape. See where it says auto? Guess what? We were right there. There you go. There's also indexing. You can actually put an index mark, mark wherever you want on this thing just by hitting the play button and hitting mark. You see the little index flashing below the record speed or playback speed rather? It's putting an index mark on the tape. And you can, of course, also erase it. Now, let's go back to the beginning and show you what it looks like when you want to get to all your index marks on the tape. You just hit the index search and it says scan. And you hit the fast forward button because we're at the beginning. It's going gonna, it's gonna to rewind a little bit and play it for a few seconds. And then it should go automatically to the next one. There it goes, all by itself. I put two more index marks on this tape. There's the second one. Rewinding a bit, and it's playing. It's going to kick right back in a fast forward and look for the next one. So this is the index scan mode. And there's the third one. There's another way to find your index marks on the machine. Let me rewind it. Another way you can find your index marks is by number. One, two, or three. And you should find the third index mark on the machine and start playing it automatically. And here is the back of the SL HF2100, which I've never shown. Moving in, we have the usual antenna connections, control L and control S, and here are all your inputs and outputs. Notice, most of them have a Super VHS option. This is, I think, the only consumer Betamax that's not ED Beta to have this option. And these are all gold connectors, by the way.
really nice. And here's the rest of the machine in the back, no big deal. And you get a nice AC convenience outlet. And there you have it, an in-depth, high-definition look at the SLHF 2100 Betamax by Sony. The 15th anniversary Betamax and the only buttonless Betamax ever. Hope you enjoyed it. Ray Glasser on March 4th, 2020. Thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.